Code 3 Americans, welcome back. Lots been going on since I did the last video. Sorry about that. I've been a little bit busy. Wanted to go over uh, some of what's going on in the markets. Uh, obviously, everyone is probably seeing that the stock market is uh, a bit of a roller coaster, and it's definitely on the downhill side of that ride. So I wanted to go over that a little bit, um, why that may be happening. You see in the Wall Street Journal here, uh, I just noted this article as the market is melting down. People are feeling it. My stomach is churning all day. I've, I've talked to people over the last few weeks. Some have sold entirely out of the market. I talked to a good buddy of mine the other day said uh, somebody in his family sits and watches the market every day. Uh, said they've lost a half a million dollars uh, uh, just this year in a fairly short amount of time. But my question is, did they really lose it? Was it ever theirs? Is it ever really real? You know, my good buddy, Russ Gray, co-hosts the Real Estate Guys radio show, uh, international show, been on the radio for 25 years. And he says all the time, equity isn't really real. Really. Well, why is that? Well, we're seeing it right now. Until you can extract that equity, whether it's out of the stock market or out of your home equity or real estate or whatever the case may be, it's not really real. It's just wealth on paper, which is exactly why the Federal Reserve doesn't care if the stock market goes down. They want to slow inflation. They want to slow consumer spending. They want to slow people's ability to borrow. And people, when they have wealth on paper, they feel rich. So they spend more. It's called a wealth effect. So anyway, I, I, I'm going to get into a little bit of why this is happening in the stock market and what, what may be to come. But I really wanted to look at this article to illustrate Russ's point so well that it's not really real. So I was talking about this chief... Uh, uh, um, chief investment officer at this firm is taking calls from clients and saying, Hey, move me all the cash. They're panicking. You know, they, they want their investments so they can enjoy life and so forth. You know, it's easy for 30 years old, say, oh, I'll just write it out, which is a whole nother thing we're going to talk about here in a second. But what if you're 70? What if you're 60? What if you're 65 and you're right at the point in your life that you need that money to be able to, uh, um, retire and live the life that you've been working your life to build up, you know, but you've been conditioned that the stock market's the only place to be for, for the life of me. I still don't understand that. Well, I guess I kind of do. I mean, my, my, my kid was just getting quizzed on this in school. She's only in junior high and, and I'll share some of that here at the end if we got time, but it's just crazy that to me, the, the more I get around other opportunities, it's just crazy to me that anybody would go into the stock market. And in fact, um, I'm looking at a slide we did last fall in November, and we were showing record valuation for money losing tech companies. And I brought that back from the October New Orleans Investment Conference, and it just showed these these tech companies that were uh, record valuations when they didn't even make a profit. Well, how those are in the NASDAQ. How's that getting treated right now? The NASDAQ's getting hammered. Well, that's because the easy money ban from the Federal Reserve has stopped playing. And now all of a sudden the air has to come out of that balloon. Guys, we were saying this was going to happen last fall for anybody that was following the content and paying attention. And I, I said here, I'm looking at the slide. Uh, I pulled it up from last fall in red. I put the stock market has morphed into enormous casinos. And that's what we're seeing. Um, so I want to show you this article. It says stocks and bonds are getting hammered and so forth. You know, families are watching the investments they meant for down payments for college tuition or retirement shrink day after day. They've seen big retailers like Walmart and Target record their steepest stock declines in a decade. Um, a lot of volatility. So if you look at this, it just really caught my attention that um, right here, I think that's pronounced Ryder. Rick Ryder, the head of fixed income and giant asset manager BlackRock, that's a huge organization, likened the state of the financial markets to a Category 5 hurricane. The veteran bond trader has been in the business for three decades and said the, pr the rapid price swings are unlike anything he's ever seen. Yeah, it, it's like being at Vegas and, and getting all the excitement around the craps table. Everybody gets excited watching it until it's your money on the line. Well, if you got money in that market, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I want to point out where this may be, to, may be going so that people can make good decisions um, if you haven't already. So let me show a chart. This is the same thing we talked about last, uh, last fall and early this spring. But this chart is... Uh, let's see, we got the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500. Those are all on the right. 
And then we got the uh, total assets on the Federal Reserve on the left. Those are in millions. So that's actually representing trillions. Yes, with a T dollars. And just look, I'm not going to go way into the weeds on this, but as, as you've seen in our past videos, we point out these rapid uh, uh, increases in the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve. And then all of a sudden, the stock markets and home and the same thing for real estate and other things as well. They start going way up in value. That's because easy money was floating through the economy. People were able to borrow. People were able to lever themselves up. Spending increased. And uh, and then obviously supply chains were also shut down at that time relative to human reaction to the illness. So that that shoved consumer price indexes way through the roof. And now the Federal Reserve. You know they're being harped on by politicians in a contested election year, and they're being told, hey, we got to get this price inflation under control. So what are they doing? They're raising rates. Now, I want to hit on this. I really encourage you to watch this whole video. I want to hit on this. The Federal Reserve's only raised the, the target rate twice, and they've only done it by 75 basis points. I mean, everybody's freaking out, and they've only moved it by 75 basis points. I mean, we're, we're at around, what? 75 basis points, which is three quarters of a percent to 1% for the overnight federal funds rate. That's all they've done, guys. And, and everything's freaking out already. And we talked about that months ago, that as they raise the rates, the equity markets are going to have to get unstable. And then it'll be a question of how far can they go? How long can they go? And how resolved are they? How much are they willing to break those markets? Well, right now, they're certainly... Uh, willing to break the markets. This is uh, the White House downplaying Wednesday last week, the drop in the stock market, saying it's something they don't watch every day. And uh, so my, uh, yeah, right here, nothing has changed how we see the stock market. Um, that's not something that we keep an eye on every day. Well, you have to ask yourself, right, wrong, or indifferent, the reality is consumer prices are killing wage earners, the poor and middle class, and they've, uh, the, the last couple of years, have enriched asset holders. So the, the administration saying, hey, we're, we're going to attack the equity positions and we're going to bring prices down so that the average Joe and Jane out on Main Street can afford to pay their rent and groceries and so forth. And that's what they're doing. So you have to look at kind of the cross currents, as George Gammon would call them. There's so many cross currents in all this. You have to look at the politics of it. Yeah, the Federal Reserve is independent, but Jerome Powell works and he was appointed uh, by, by Biden and then he was confirmed by Congress. So Politics is, is economics, as Danielle DiMartino Booth would say, and she used to work inside the Federal Reserve in Dallas. So anyway, I wanted to point out, though, here, look at these numbers. Dow Jones, uh, it's up a little bit today, so this is uh, just a little bit old, but just over 32,000 on the Dow. My point is this. It's falling. The Nasdaq's falling. The S&P 500's falling. Why? Because they're they're quitting. The Federal Reserve has quit purchasing um or I should say quit quantitative easing. They've quit flooding easy money into the market. They're tightening up and uh, and the easy money band has quit playing and now we're seeing the results of that. All that air in the balloon, everything that was speculative is coming out. People are buying into the stock market, buy low, sell high, and they feel rich like they're like they're getting all these gains. But But look at this. This is why Russ says it's not really real, really, until you get it out of there. So if you look today, we're at just over 31,000. If you back up in time, to get to that same spot, just over 31,000, you're going to be somewhere around February 2021. This is May of 2022. So you have to ask yourself, what has really happened? Well, what's happened is you've went backwards in time a year. And what are your gains over that year now? Zero. And you probably, depending on what vehicle you went into the stock market, you may have paid taxes on that money before you went into the market. And this is my point, guys. There's so many opportunities out there to where it does not imprison you into this stock market, to where if you leave early, you're either taxed going in, you're taxed going out, you're penalized coming out if you leave out of your IRAs. There are so many tools out there, guys, where you could have your money having the same or better tax benefits and not be in jail, not be imprisoned under, under fear uh, of the duress, you know, under duress of if if I if I leave earlier, if I want to shift my position with a shifting economy, um, that, that I'm going to be punished. You don't have to have that fear. There's ways you can do it and still invest in things and move money around and have the same or better benefits. So this this is absolutely, you know, people say, oh yeah, Dave Ramsey says stay on the bus, and the only people on a roller coaster that get hurt are the people that jump off. Well, okay, but the point is, even if this comes back up. 
even if this comes back up to where it was, you have to start running your returns over how long. This is still lost opportunity time. There, there's a there's opportunity cost to this time, whether it's two months, six months, or six years. You could have been in cash flowing investments that weren't hinged to this market and been getting that money paid out to you uh, month over month and not had to deal with this. This is all speculation. And if you need this money at a time in your life that now you got a choice to make, well, I either take some losses or I pay some penalties or whatever the case may be. I just, for the life of me, I don't understand uh, why, why folks are doing that. Um, there, there are, like I said, there's so many better options. And uh, here, I just wanted to hit on this to kind of illustrate my point, because the reality is this. CPI is still up. Inflation is still up. It's probably easing back. That's called disinflation, not to be confused with deflation. That would mean coming, you know, prices coming down. But essentially, inflation will probably slow. But the reality is it's what, what the damage that's been done is here to stay. And as it starts to slow, maybe they will back off some. But right now they're attacking it hard. And here's the Kansas City Federal Reserve uh, President Esther George saying that uh, interest rates are needed now to bring down inflation and policymakers are not focused on the impact it's having on the stock market. So if you look here, the quote is, I think we're looking for this for I think what we're looking for is the transmission of our policy through markets understanding and that tightening should be expected. So it's not aimed at the equity markets in particular, but I think it is one of the avenues through which tighter financial conditions will emerge. So what are they, what's she saying? She's saying it's going to get tighter in those markets, in equity markets. So this is uh, completely predictable, guys. Um, this is not a surprise. And the reality is they've only moved at three quarters of a point. My question is this. What happens when they start offloading their balance sheet, which is what they say they're going to start doing this summer, which means they've got about $9 trillion worth of assets, you know, treasuries and mortgage-backed securities on their balance sheet, and they say they're going to start offloading that, which meaning let the debt run off, not renewing it, which means the private sector investors are going to have to scoop that up because the government's not backstopping it. It's supply and demand, guys. If you got five bottles of water and you're in the desert with 100 people, how much is that water worth? A bunch. If you've got 5,000 bottles of water at a beach club and there's three people, how much is it worth? Not very much. It's the same thing here. The, the private sector is going to start scooping up this debt. And what are they going to say? Hey, we want a risk premium. We're not going to do it for the same rates as the government. So that could push bond rates up. And in the case is that, in other words, investors are going to start demanding a higher return. Well, then you got to ask yourself, what's the big institutional money going to do? If all of a sudden they could get 3% in a treasury, are they really going to ride this stock market volatility to try to make a couple percent more? Probably not. That's why they're, they, they trade off algorithms and computers. They're always going to front run the consumer, the consumer trader. And th the fact is they're just going to... Uh, they're going to move to something safer. What's that going to do? It's going to extract money out of the equity markets, out of the stock market. What's that going to do? It's going to lower the Dow. Okay, guys, this isn't rocket science. So um, what we're trying to do is just kind of take all this information and simplify it down so that uh, people have some, some uh, tangible information to work with. Now, nothing we're giving is financial advice. It's ideas and information. But I think anybody, you know, it's got a little common sense, can look at all this information and say it's all indicating one thing. They're targeting inflation and they're raising rates to do it. And that's hurting the, the equity markets, the stock market. It is going to slow real estate. We're seeing that in mortgage rates. I'll probably do another video on that and because that's kind of misunderstood. So anyway, guys, there are so many better options out there. And this is the whole point of Code 3 Assets. We're saying why build in single point failure into your life? Because the, the reality is when you go into that stock market, you're, you're tethered to it. Everybody's afraid. I've, I've taken numerous phone calls from people that, that want to sell, but they don't want to pay the penalties or they don't want to pay the tax. Uh, my question is, why are you in something that gives that much control over you to where you can't pivot as the world pivots? Because do you think BlackRock pivots? You're darn right they do. When the world starts to change, they are moving money around. But you're not allowed to. Not if you put yourself in a jail sale where you have a six by six square box to operate in. You know, the, there's a lot of other folks out there. They're able to just pivot around. And that's what's not being told to you at Wall Street, or I'm sorry, about Wall Street. Everybody's just saying, oh, that's the, the thing. Get in there for the long term. But my question goes back to that chart I showed you. What happens when 
maybe this thing stalls out for a while, continues, and, and it sets you back a year in time. What if you could have just been making a, a stable 11% or something cash flow over that year and then another half a year to recover? Pretty soon you have to kind of project that out and say, where am I better off? This is why we're saying, this is why I said, quote, the stock markets have morphed into enormous casinos, end quote, in November. It's a buy low, sell high scheme. And then all of a sudden the equity dies off and people feel like they're losing money. As Russ Gray would say, it wasn't real. It was air in a balloon. Whether it's high, whether it's low, it's not real until you cash it out. So why do that? That's why the biggest folks out there, um, they're, they're really more stable and they invest for cash flow, not equity gains. And uh, so anyway, something to consider. Uh, if you're not in our community, you know, you'll get invites to our community meetups. You'll get our newsletters and so forth. Just send an email to community at code3assets.com. We'll make sure we get you added on there. And this is the whole point, again, is we're Code 3 Americans. We're saying, hey, why build single point failures into your life? Because here's what here's what we've talked about on other videos. The reality is this. You need the government now to fix this stock market issue. If you bought when the Dow was, say, 34000 and you're upside down right now, well, we either need higher earnings through companies. The last quarter of GDP was 1.4% down, so there was a, sh a shrinkage there. Uh, fuel prices are through the roof. Consumer spending may be dropping. What's that going to do to companies that make profits could slow it. So what are you going to need to get your equity numbers back up? More easy money. So now you're relying on politicians for your own health, wealth, and well-being. The question is, why are you doing that? There's real assets out there that, that give you tax benefits and cash flow to keep you out from under the thumb of central planners and politicians so you don't have to ride these roller coasters. That's the whole point of being a Code 3 American. With that, we'll see you next time.